Praise the Lord. Today, as we discussed, today we will uh, study the book of John, chapter 11. I'm not going to take the entire chapter, just few lessons from probably the first 35 verses, which really was a blessing to me. Uh, I'll read the initial portion and then we'll pray. Chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. A certain man was sick. It's not a good note to start, right? So this is just before Jesus teaching his disciples for the Last Supper. This is almost a week before and probably most of the scholars believe this is the last miracle that Jesus had done with his disciples. Uh, we know Marcus here was healed, but during his ministry, this is the last miracle. And it started with the note saying that there was a certain man who was sick. Okay. This is one of the stories that every uh, Sunday school kid knows, you know, everyone. I don't think there's anybody who was not aware of the story. And John Levin is such a familiar portion, such a blessing. Okay. So just as we pray, just ask the Lord to speak to us. And also think of the story that you know about Lazarus, how Jesus raised him from dead. We know the story. For a moment, I want you to meditate and then probably we'll get into the thought. Okay. Father Lord, I come to your presence. Few of us have come together. I pray that you'll speak to us in a very personal manner. Thank you, Father Lord. Help us to understand the depth of your word. And let our hearing bring transformation in our life. As we initially prayed that we'll become good soldiers, good weapons in your hand. We live a true life of a disciple and act and behave like a disciple and bring many to Christ. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's very interesting to understand who Lazarus was. Here we hear saying that Lazarus, his name is mentioned. I want you to just understand that the person Lazarus, okay? He was in the town of Bethany. So when John is writing, that particular town was important because Jesus frequently went to that house. It says his sisters are known among the disciples. Though there were many Martha and many Mary, without any description, you say Mary of Bethany, it was known among the believers because they were well known. And it says very clearly in uh, verse uh, two, three, it says, uh, verse two, it says, it was that Mary who anointed the Lord. So she had, that sister had a very special relation with the Lord. This family had a very special relation with the Lord. Verse three, it says, uh, the sisters are sending, saying that he whom you love. Did you hear? So the sisters are so confident that Jesus loves Lazarus. This is not a general love. It is like a deep relationship. You understand? It was a deep relationship. And we know Martha prepared food and a very costly sacrifice this family had done. You understand? So you should understand, this is like a very special house of Jesus. You understand? This is very close to Jesus. In verse chapter 12 also, we see there was a feast in their home. So Almighty God, when he decided to have a feast just before his uh, cross, it was picked in that home. You understand? So it's a very special home. Why am I going with all this? I want you to understand. Follow me for some time. Chapter, uh, same chapter, verse 33, it says, Therefore Jesus saw them weeping, and the Jews who came with him, uh, with her, was weeping. Jesus groaned in his spirit and was troubled. You understand? So there were many people who died in that city. But this family was very special that you know, even though Jesus knew Jesus is going to bring Lazarus back, seeing their pain, Jesus was hurt. He was troubled in his heart. You understand? 
Jesus was troubled in his heart. And verse 35 says, Jesus wept. And the Jewish people see how he loved him. So this is a family who had a very special relation with Jesus. And not just that we know, disciples knew, the gospel writers knew, they themselves knew Jesus hanged around in this house. You got it? Okay, now you got the context, right? Who lasts us? I can go on and on, but I want to talk a very short message today. But it says he was sick. So very first principle I want you to understand. We can have serious challenges in life, even though we are walking in the perfect will of God. Did you hear what I said? Even if we are walking with the Lord and our relationship with the Lord is perfect, still you can have some serious challenges because we are living in a fallen world. We are not aliens to problem just because we have a special relation with God. If anyone is teaching or anyone is being deceived that you won't have problems just because you are in the Lord, which is not written in the Bible. You understand? I don't know if any one of you are going through problems. It is nothing to do with your position in the Lord. Yeah, there are some sins that is committed because of sin. That's a different topic, but I'm saying godly men can go through tough times. Godly women can go through tough times. And Jesus himself said, you will go through tough times. You understand? So I want us to understand that. We have come to a place of fear-driven Christianity. You know what it is? I went out. Something happened immediately. You think, oh, today I didn't read the Bible. That's why it happened. You understand? That is not Christianity. That is not a relation with God. You should read. That's not what I'm trying. I'm not trying to dilute that, but I'm saying it is not, you did this, therefore this did not happen to you. You gave this, therefore you got this. That's not the measure in which the Lord deals with you. You understand? I'm telling you very openly as brothers and sisters, we all have our Christian life. There are some days which you are low, sometime in your season you go down. That's all normal. There was a time years before, uh, my walk with the Lord was not right. But I'm telling you, during that time, there was a lot of material blessing that happened in my life. And I, I was asking the Lord, you know, Lord, you're still so kind to me, though I did not walk with you. Because God was on one day when I was praying, God was trying to teach me through the word saying that. Do not correlate these two things. For you to be blessed, to be you protected, it is not your deeds, it is the mercy of God. You understand? It is the protection, the provision of God. How many times, you know, you remember John 9, a man who was blind, got healed. They asked who it is, they didn't even know who Jesus was. You understand? How did that man get such a big miracle when he did not even know who Jesus was? So I don't want you to live in that slavery, you understand, of fear-driven Christianity. You got it? Trouble is a reality. So I'm just going to share a few lessons with you, okay? <clears throat> Verse 2. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with the fragrant oil and wiped her fe his feet with the hair, whose brother was Lazarus. Therefore sisters sent to him, when trouble comes, the first place you should go is to Jesus. Okay? I'm going to tell you very, very simple things. Okay? There's nothing. You're not going to hear something which is out of the ordinary. Okay? This has been a blessing to me. I thought I should share it with you. So troubles can come when you're walking right with the Lord. Second thing, when trouble comes, first place you should run is to Jesus. Not your mobile. Not your friend. 
not to any place. It should be to Jesus. We know that we don't do that. You understand? First thing, go to Jesus. Find a lonely place and go pray. You understand? Slip out. Don't be among the group, but go to Jesus the very first time when you are in trouble. It could be emotional low. One thing I'm seeing is, now the biggest weapon that Satan does or is using is to discourage us. You understand? A spirit of discouragement is so prominent. It just, just goes around. People don't know the meaning of life. I'm so discouraged. My life is having no meaning. And for that, Satan uses social media so much. It's happening in everybody's life, not in my life. Everyone is so happy. I'm not happy. I'm telling you, disconnect completely from social media. Get your head into the book of the word. You understand? You're not doing a favor to anybody. You're doing a favor to yourself. You understand? You're not becoming more right. Listen to me. You're not becoming, see, most of the people think, oh, is it wrong to see Facebook and all those? I'm telling you, it is not about the right or wrong. You're preserving yourself. Protect yourself. Don't allow junk to go inside you. You understand? Don't allow junk to go inside you. Only allow the word of God to go. One, trouble is a reality. First thing when you know about trouble, run to Jesus. Okay? <coughs> Today almost everyone other than Anand and uh, Pipi, nobody is sharing the video. No, Shivan also. Thank you. Whoever can, please. It's nice to see faces. <laughs> Okay. The next thing I want to share, verse 4. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. I want you to understand one thing. Did Mary and Martha understand why Lazarus was sick? What will happen to Lazarus? Did they know? No. But who knew it? Jesus knew it. You might not know why the trouble happened, how the trouble is going to end, when the trouble will end. It doesn't matter because Jesus knows it. Most of the time I want to know. We even give timeline to God. God, by tomorrow afternoon this should happen, Lord. It's fine to pray like that and all this. I'm not trying to tell anything about it. But it's, you know, what is your safety? Do you know what is your safety? That your father knows how your trouble is going to be handled. You need to pray like that. God, I'm going through something in my life, but I know what you're going to do with that trouble. Therefore, I'm not worried. You understand? Even on deathbed, Lord, this sickness, I don't understand what's going on, but I know you got it and you have a plan for that. You understand? Does your children get worried about when are you paying their school fees? No, right? They should be, right? Because if they don't pay the school fee at a the time, they can go to school, right? But why, why are they not worried? Is there any one of your children come to you and tell that dad, don't forget to pay the school fees? Might be there, might be some kids, I don't know. But most of the normal ones won't do it. Why? It doesn't even cross their mind. Because, listen to me, because it is not their problem because their father got it. Most of the time, we are not aware that our father got our problem. You understand? My dad got it. I don't understand, but he has got it. Inform him. Be in his presence. And you ask the Lord, Lord, 
my trust is. You know what it is. <clears throat> Jesus uh, spoke to Paul on the way to Damascus and said, Paul, get up and go to the city. What did he say? Hey, here is the next five-year missionary plan for you. Is that what Jesus said? Then go to the city. I'll show you what you're going to suffer. If I'm born, God, I'm going to suffer. Can you tell me a little preview of what I'm going to suffer? Little, a bit. I, I want to see it. A little. Abraham, please get up and leave everything of yours and go to the land which I am going to show. Oh, I'm going to show. God, which direction? Lord? Is it one year, two year, three year? Little, little direction. We need to learn to walk directionless with the one who decides your direction. You understand? We call it blind faith. No. It is called as trusting the one who walks with you. Understand? I told, this is a Sunday school message what I'm going to tell today. But most of the time, we miss this. It is very simple if you understand the love of the Lord. Let me keep going. <laughs> Verse 5. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. You know what is the greatest strength of Christian life? To know Jesus loves you. I'm telling you. The greatest strength of Christian life is you knowing how much Jesus loves you. Let's take an example of a small kid mm -hmm. and a mother. Have you seen kids going and slapping mom's face? Small kids. How many of you have seen it? Everyone has seen it, right? What is the confidence of this little kid? And why is the mother not feeling offended about it? Why? Only... It's 12 hours. Only because of the love relationship. Do you agree? The kid won't go do that to somebody else. But I'm telling you, your trust to know Jesus. See, John 17, you remember? Jesus praying. And Jesus said, these things has to happen. Everything, if you take John 17, one verse alone, I'll read. What is the intention of Christian life? Jesus prayed for himself from verse 1 to 5. Verse 6 to 19, Jesus prayed for his disciples. From verse 21 onward, Jesus prayed for every believer who's going to be a believer. But what is the foundational principle of Christian life? You know what? Chapter 17, verse 23, it says, I in him, you in me, that they may be made perfect in one. To be made perfect in the love of Christ, that's Christian life. You understand? You fall in love. It's not a fear-driven. It's not activity-driven. It is not a moralistic religion. It is love-driven, you understand? Do you love Jesus passionately? That kind of love, more than your children, do you, do you love? If you love, you love to be with him, you understand? If you love someone, you love to be with him or her. Do you love to be with Jesus? But then if you love Jesus so much, why is that you struggle to read the Bible and pray? It is not because you are busy. Trust me, it is because your love life is not right. Huh? You understand? Your love life is not right. All the married women and men, the first time when you got married, does anyone need to teach you to spend time with each other? You're <coughs> madly in love. <coughs> <coughs> A child is born. Does anybody needs to teach you to spend time with the child, to carry the child? 
how much more our Almighty God. To know. See, Paul kept praying again and again and again and again one thing. You know what? My prayer is that you would know Christ. My prayer is that you would know the love of God. Love of God is just not cross. It's much beyond that. Every day, you won't even touch the surface of love of God. Let me read one more verse. <clears throat> verse 6. Okay, so first I said, can we repeat what we learned? One, trouble is normal. Okay. You know, <laughs> Peter said this way, don't act as if something strange happened when fiery trials come to you. Have you read that verse? <laughs> don't act as Oh, this happened to me. Paul Peter said, stop. Don't act as if something strange happened to you when fiery trials come to you. Oh, so fiery trials are normal. That's what the Bible says. Second thing I said, when you are in trouble, spend time with the Lord. Go to God first. And if you have a pattern of spending time somewhere else, spend time with Jesus when you are in trouble. You understand? Third one, I said, Jesus knows the result of your pain. That's all you need to know. You need to know your dad got it. You need to know your dad has got it. Fourth one, I said, your strength is that Jesus loves you. You understand? The one who made heaven and earth has got it. I don't know which country you belong to. You have a financial crisis. Let's say the national leader of your country says, don't worry, my son, I got it. Will you worry anymore? Will you worry? No, you won't do it. Because he got it. He got it. But we pray, however, some people pray and get more discouraged. Pray and pray and get discouraged. You know why? Because we haven't understood who our God is. Okay. Then I said, was <clears throat> our strength is that Jesus loves us. Verse 6. Okay, this is probably the reason why like last time <laughs> I told, uh, I wanted to share from John 11. Verse 6. When he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Do you know that if Jesus did not stay two more days, we would not have John 11? Right? It's like a normal uh, healing, right? It would not take this much place in the Bible, right? For generations, listen to me very, very carefully. For generations, this is a blessing because there is a delay in the answer. Delay is part of God's plan. Please write it down. Some delays are part of God's plan. I don't like delay. None of us like delay. Who likes delay? Nobody likes it. But we need to understand it is God's plan. It's part of God's plan. Okay? There are some delays not because of that. I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you there are delays which is planned by God. You understand? You asked Joseph, Joseph, 17 years old, huh? you saw the dream. Did you want to be the prime minister at 17 or 30? What will be Joseph's answer? Uh, Moses was prompted at the age of 80 to deliver people. You asked Moses, Moses, you wanted to lead these people at 40 or 80? He'll say 80, Lord. Moses, Abraham had a promise at 75 to have a son. You ask Abraham, Abraham, you wanted a son at 75 or 100? 100, Lord. All these delays were beautiful, part of God's plan. You understand? If there is unfulfilled promises in your life, don't give up. God has a special plan for that. Don't give up. Do not give up. God is making something special. You understand? 
God is really something special. Don't get discouraged. Don't stop praying. I've seen many people stop praying. Don't. Keep praying. Keep praying. Delay could be, can be part of God's mighty beautiful plan. You understand? I can tell a lot of things like that. Uh, there are so many people in this group, Mallard and Pippi, so many people who I know personally, years before how many conversations we had, how many delays happened, every delay turned it out to be good for all of us, right? Good for all of us. And I thank God for all the delayed answers. Because God knew I couldn't handle that time. You will now know what God and God's grace, what God is preparing you. The next what I want to share is verse 15. Okay. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Neitherless, let's go to him. Jesus is telling, I'm so happy I was not there. Listen to me very carefully. See, don't read the word just, just like that again. Okay? Why Jesus is happy that I was he was not there? Please tell me. The verse itself says, why Jesus was happy he was not there? Because that delay is going to strengthen the disciples in a way that cannot be explained. That's what Jesus said. That you may believe. See, they are going to face their greatest crisis in the world. Jesus is going to die. This delay is part of that. Understand? This delay is... See, God knows how to strengthen your faith when you surrender. Most of us try to strengthen ourselves. You can't. None of us can. None of us can be strengthened. So none of us even can be you know, joyful in the Lord unless God works in our life. You understand what I'm saying? God who called us is faithful. See, Jude 1 verse 24, you remember 24, 26? The one who called us is faithful to keep us blameless. Not just blameless. He knows how to strengthen your faith. Your responsibility is to abide in Christ. He knows how to strengthen you. He knows how to transform you. He knows how to change you. He called the disciples and said what? Follow me and also go to the near school and learn how to fish for men. Is that what Jesus said? No. You come. I will make you fishers of men. So the responsibility of people to be transformed into the likeness of Christ and to be fishers of men was whose responsibility? Jesus. What was people's responsibility? To come. You understand the difference? See, our problem is we try to be. You ask anybody to share? Hmm? Here? Immediately they'll say, no, I, 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 I didn't prepare enough. Uh, I'm not uh, grown up enough. You know, I need to study enough. Give yourself to in the hand of the Lord. First of all, you all should start sharing the word of God to everybody. You should have that habit. And none of you should think what the other person is going to think. Did you hear what I said? You can make grammar mistake. You can make pronunciation mistake. You might fumble. You might stop. It doesn't matter. You might talk 30 minutes, 28 minutes. You might have said something which nobody listened. But one word can change people. Do you know that? One word. I always tell God. Next week, if I ask this week what I preached, if all of you forget, I don't have any problem. But what I really want is, it made you one step closer to Christ. You understand? That should be our passion. God knows how to increase our faith. We should learn only to please our almighty God. The seventh lesson that I wanted to share 
with that, I'll just repeat because I'm going to stop with 18 lines. Verse 18, I'll stop. Verse 18, it says, Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And that does not look logical. This man is going to die. Jesus is two miles away. Think once more. This man is going to die. Jesus is two miles away. They could have taken Lazarus there, right? Some logic or some delay can't be explained. It is not logical. You understand? What do I mean by that? You are praying for your son's fever. Nothing is happening. But you are praying for cancer and you can see healing. Now this can't be explained. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of our troubles are so simple, but it is not even going. It can't be explained. Two miles. Two miles is nothing. It is fine if some things in your life mess does not make sense. You understand what I'm saying? Not everybody you give children. No problem. My kid alone frequently falls sick. Everybody has job. No problem. Me alone. Never peace of me. I'm not talking about my things. I'm saying some of us are like that. And Satan reminds you. You understand? Some things can't be explained. But that's fine. Because the Lord is at work. You understand? The Lord is at work. You might have a small fellowship in your home. Everywhere you go, people are coming at you home alone, nobody comes. Don't try to explain anything. Be in the center of the will of God. Be joyful in the Lord. This led to the greatest miracle during the ministry of Jesus. The resurrection of a man who was dead more than four days. All these unexplainable things had to happen for something like that to happen. You get what I said? I don't know what you're going through. Or this might be a message to prepare you for something which can't be explained. God is at work. I said seven things quickly. One, we all will have troubles in this world. <laughs> Jesus said, if you obey the word, the world will hate you. We are living in a Christendom where our church should be accepted by everybody. Our faith should be accepted by everybody. We should be the most likable people. Even churches have banners saying that we are for the unreached. Unaccepted, this is inclusive of everybody. But Jesus said, if you walk according to the word, the world will hate you. Not might hate you, will hate you. Forget about the world, but what about us? Do you know that many of your colleagues will have the shock of their lives? They come to know that you are a believer. We don't like to represent Christ. Number one. Trouble is okay. I always tell. I would prefer to walk through the valley of death with Christ than sitting in the pasture without Christ. You understand? Christianity is not a treasure hunt. You understand what I'm saying? Please don't ask people to come, 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 come. There is treasure here. You have what problem? Back problem? Come, it will be healed. You have what problem? This problem? Come, God will give it to you. You have money issues? Come. This is not a treasure hunt. This is a story of transformation that you and me will become like Christ. You understand? 
we pay money go to museums to see oh great artist this did this work oh it looks so beautifully stand over there and say, what a masterpiece i'm inviting each one of you you will become the masterpiece of christ he will build you you look more beautiful than anything in the world anything in the world god who made i always tell heaven earth mount everest grand canyon he did not ask satan satan did you see grand canyon look at my creation satan did you create anything no what did god say did you see my servant job so job is more beautiful than everything else hmm? the invitation should be god of heaven is going to make you a masterpiece okay welcome to the world of reality trouble is part of christian life trouble is part of christian life pain is part and parcel of christian life you understand none of us can escape but in midst of pain our provider has a plan to mend you to be a masterpiece got it second thing i said in trouble run to jesus just go to jesus hello jesus said in john 17 as i was meditating in john 17 lord i kept everyone who's given to me in your name we have to be keepers you know what keepers are you need to keep your children not just with money with prayer your wife your possession your family your friends church you need to keep them by your prayer do you mention everybody's name over here that lord their christian life will be protected be a keeper did you hear what i said be a keeper pray for your children that they will not be attracted to the world they will walk in the light that the god will attract them you will cry and pray for them pray for your spouse pray for your friends that no one will be lost be a keeper run to christ number 3 purpose of pain even if we are don't understand it is okay because the one to whom you have gone knows and has a perfect plan for your pain understood he has a plan number 4 your strength is to know the love of christ your strength is to know that christ loves you jesus loves you you know Do you know that he loves you more than everything? But do you really know that? Do you respond to it? You understand? Do you act? Do you act like the one who loves Christ so much? Can somebody look at me and say that, you know, one thing, whatever is said and done, he loves Christ so much. Do you have that testimony? what was it and he loves christ so much next thing i want to say <coughs> delay is part of can be all delays are not part of it could be hindrances or any other things but i'm saying delay also is beautiful part of god's plan you need to understand that then god knows how to strengthen you never forget it he is the one who strengthens you I'm telling you many times I've prayed this prayer God please encourage me <laughs> I don't know if you're afraid like that I'm feeling very low Lord please give me a spirit of refreshment encourage me every time God has answered that understand take your hand off and tell God I'm miserable I need help don't try anything you understand surrender the key word is surrender god 
I'm at your presence. Do what you wish. Father knows how to strengthen you. Last seventh thing I said, some tough times can't be explained. Some tough times can't be explained. That's okay. Do miles, God. How long have you been praying? No answer. Why, Lord? Some can't be explained, but he is in control. You understand? <coughs> I told from the beginning, it's such a simple thing. Read it carefully. When you read it, don't read it. Some of you are in a, like, a, 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 you, some of you read the Bible as if you're on a battleground. One year sense of achievement, I finished the entire Bible, Genesis to Revelation. Some competition is going on, you know. I read five chapters a day. Brother, what about you? I read one hour a day. Some disciplines are good, but more than that, sometimes when we go into that kind of mindset, we miss the essence of Bible. You understand? There are places some verse should stop you. Read it many times. That has shaken up your life. You understand? I'm not able to read further. That's like, it hit me so hard. Again and again you're reading. Ah, now Ajahn said that one verse is okay. I'll read five times and then stop. No, huh? You are a grown up. <laughs> I'm not trying to tell you that. But be very strong in the Lord. It is beautiful to walk with the Lord. Okay. God bless you.